Business Matters is brought to you in part by Lion Burger Construction and Berglund Center, where live entertainment lives in the Roanoke Valley. Hello and welcome to Business Matters, a program on Blue Ridge PBS that strives to explore that subject from a variety of viewpoints and scenarios featuring interviews with the people helping to grow jobs, the economy, and the Blue Ridge region because business matters. I'm Gene Morano. On our show today, we'll head out to the lake, Smith Mountain Lake, to talk about business conditions and related issues there. Our guests are Andy Bruns, Executive Director with the Smith Mountain Lake Chamber of Commerce, and the former longtime director of the chamber, Vicki Gardner, who's spearheading an effort to create a community center there that could host a variety of functions. And Vicki and Andy, thanks for joining us today. We should also mention you have a title, the president of the Smith Mountain Lake Center. Yes, I do. Yes, you do. <laughs> Loving um, it. I, I wanted to talk, Andy, we'll start with you. You're from the, the newspaper world. Yes. Um, where you report on the news, you don't make the news. But uh, and, and I didn't know, you just told me you had a long time house at the lake anyway. But, mm -hmm. but talk about the similarities between being in the journalism world and instead of reporting on the news, making the news. There is some similarity. Yeah, there really is. Uh, and you know, my role as a publisher at the newspaper level, um, I was more on the business side of the, uh, uh, of the newspaper and dealt with a lot of elected officials and, and things like that. So it, it was a natural uh, transition. When I looked at the job description for executive director at the chamber, I said, I've been doing a lot of that stuff for a lot of years. So mm -hmm. it made some sense. Yeah, and Vicki, uh, I want to talk about, let's get right into the, the, the sure. this, this. You have a lot of institutional knowledge with this chamber. You were there as a director for how long? 17 years. Okay, mm -hmm. um, but talk about the new thing you're, you're spearheading to uh, purchase a building for the Smith Mountain Lake Center where you could host a variety of events, maybe some trade shows. There'd be a stage there for live performances. Talk about that, where, where that's at at this point. All righty. It is... It's close. We are looking at first uh, the first level of it, which of course is the purchase of the building, and then the second tier uh, will be you know retrofitting it, and that will happen as as we go through. But immediately upon purchase, we could have things in there such as the trade show. We could have uh, allow that for for so many purposes um, uh, practice for some of our, uh, for SMAC in particular. SMAC is Smith Mountain Arts Council, and they do the plays and they do the musicals and, and uh, uh, they, they are just, they have so many offshoots of what they do and they always need space. They need space for their rehearsals and it's difficult to do rehearsals in somebody's basement. Uh, I've been there, I know that, yeah. Yes, and, and so it's also um, the, uh, you know, having a stage there. We're going to focus on education, and we would love to um, be providing things that that anybody in the community, not just the elite, but anybody in the community can take part in. And those educational programs could be something fun for the kids, something during the summertime when they're on break. And, uh, you know, it may be that they create their own little play or they, they work with art or they, uh, it, it, it is endless what this center can provide. And the purpose, which has been going on for a very, very long time, is that we have, we have so much going on in our community right now. Uh, our local trade shows are, where do you have them? Uh, right. right, for many Besides years. Besides hotel maybe. Yeah, well, for many years we had our business expo. It was sold out every single year, but it was outside, under tents, in a parking lot, Praying for good weather. A praying for good weather, which often we did not have. We had sleet and wind, and uh, but nevertheless, it uh, this would be a place that we would be able to have that you know using that as an example, uh, have that going on, and uh, it will be open. It's not a a, a place that we're going to open the turn open the door when uh, when something is happening. But we really hope to have this as the hub of Smith Mountain Lake that people can gather that uh, we can have offices for people without offices and uh, you know to bring their clients so many of our contractors they're working out of their home or out of their truck wouldn't it be nice for them to have a place that they can meet with clients just almost guaranteed that they can make an appointment come in and use this beautiful office space to meet with their clients i think it it raises the professionalism of uh, of of the workers in our lake. Like a shared meeting space. And I think you're going to see that more in the future, Andy. One of the things you want yeah. to talk about is maybe changing the, 
demographics at the lake and with with yeah. remote working. Well, and and another point on the the building that uh, the that Vicky's group has targeted has been empty for several years now. Um, and from an economic development standpoint, to me, as good as things are at the lake, when you come in from North Carolina, the first thing you see when you arrive at the lake are two empty buildings. They're relatively new, they're nice. There's a brew pub uh, on one side. Sunken, Sunken City, City, which yep. never made it. Yeah, yeah and, then, and then the grand building on the left. So as soon as you enter into Westlake and you've, you know, hey, we're finally here at the lake, the first thing you see are two empty buildings. And mm, that, right. Not a good vibe. Yeah, for me, I, I, I really want to, you know, um, see both of those get mm. back up and running, and this would be a fantastic. You know, as we as we go to taping space. here, you know, the weather's getting nicer, mm -hmm. more people are coming out, a lot of people who have summer yep. homes. There. But you're, you're looking to change that equation, and 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 you actually said that the uh, you're, you're tracking that, and with the advent of COVID, which was a bad thing, that you you saw more people. Are yeah. able to work out of their homes. Talk about how that might change the equation. Yeah, as awful as COVID was for the world from a tourism standpoint at Smith Mountain Lake, COVID was actually very good. Um, very early on, as soon as the first lockdowns happened, everybody canceled the reservations everywhere, at the lake included. And then about two weeks later, everybody realized that if I'm going to go somewhere, Smith Mountain Lake is a perfect place to take my family on vacation because we're renting a house or a condo. We're out on a boat, you know, that's either ours or one that we've rented. So you could stay in your pod. It was a safe mm -hmm. place to vacation. And um, so we had two of the best tourism years we've ever had uh, in 2020 and 2021. So. We've had a whole bunch of people who have discovered us for the first time, and we want to make sure that they come back and, you know, uh, uh, over and over again, or maybe even come to live. And mm -hmm. and that's the second part of the equation. Um, the, with the counties having invested uh, uh, millions of dollars in bringing broadband internet access to more and more of Smith Mountain Lake, uh, and the advent of work at home, uh, you know, remote workers. Um, we have a real opportunity to change the demographics of Smith Mountain Lake from a place where people only used to come to live full time in their retirement years uh, into a place where people can come and work and bring their families, bring their children, um, you know, uh, so that's what we're shooting for now is to kind of change that uh, the demog you know the demographics of the lake in a long uh, fashion. One of the things we just recently did uh, is partner with a company called Datafy, and uh, they track uh, people via their cell phones. And I know it sounds creepy. Um, big, big brother life. Yeah, yeah um, but but if you use Bluetooth in your car to make calls hands free, if you use Google Maps, if you use any one of those apps where you click, I accept the terms and conditions. Well, the reason those apps are free is because they sell this information of where you go, what you do uh, to companies who track it. And uh, Datafy has been tracking everybody across the country uh, since February 1st of 2018. So we know who has been at Smith Mountain Lake, when they come, uh, how long they stay, where they go while they're there uh, for two years pre-COVID and now two years post-COVID. And so we're, we're seeing what the differences are and how do we attract those people who maybe found us for the first time ever in 2020 and 2021, and how do we make sure they come back even after Disney World reopens and the beaches reopen. And um, so we, we, we've identified about 50,000 people who came in 2020 and 2021 for the first time ever. And so now we're gonna market to them via their cell phones with digital advertising um, and to invite them to come back. We're specifically gonna target those who don't come back in 2022 mm. to really hit them. I'm wondering if, um if you saw more people coming, even from the immediate area, I don't go to Smith Mountain Lake that often, but did you mm -hmm. see more people do staycations where they canceled Disney and they maybe they came yeah. to Roanoke or Lexington or Lynchburg or something? Abs absolutely, and it was the people who, you know, normally from Roanoke or Lynchburg who would go to Myrtle Beach or to Disney World or to Florida, and they did not feel comfortable doing that in the last two years, so they came to Smith Mountain Lake yeah. instead. I'm wondering as you put, you know, um, more emphasis maybe on getting people to live at the lake, the counties are going to have to step up and provide more services or make sure services are in place. 
Well, with the influx of people coming in, of course they're coming in and they're bringing their dollars with them. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and that, the tax dollars that from the people coming in from the outside uh, are quite a bonus for the, uh, for the supervisors on both sides of Bedford and Franklin County. Mm -hmm. So that is, uh, that is part of it that I think that will be attractive for them and, uh, and, and it will be attractive for our businesses also. When we, all of the things that we're planting right now um, there are things that people hardly even know about. Disc golf that we have right in our community. We have uh, all kinds of all kinds of recreational things to do when you're done with the water. You know, you've been out there and had a blast. Or um, in the winter time, in the fall, at times, you know, you don't have to be in the water to enjoy it. But when you come, you don't want to be an off in in off season vibe. You want to have things open, things to do, and, uh, and we are steadily building that foundation that is, going to, uh, that is going to make it more attractive for people to come into vacation, uh, for people to come in for a long weekend. They can, and, I, and I think that, uh, that our grand plan uh, is, is going to be a catalyst for continued growth and entertainment for both the, the people that are here and people from outside. Mm -hmm that location of where the building is, and it's the grand um, building that we are seeking to purchase. Um, it, it's just perfect. It's, it is, uh, uh, I call it the Taj Mahal, because it, it, it stands out like a center mm -hmm. in the lake, and it, it is a source of civic pride, or will be a source of civic pride for everybody in the community. You you're know, sit up a little. You're still raising some money for that, right? We have to raise a lot of money okay. for it, a lot of money. So it isn't as though we have this, this huge fund. I mean, it's growing and growing, but um, we're, we're about halfway there on the purchase. And, uh, uh, and, and our recognition, our community awareness, all of that is really just kicking in this week and will just continue to go forward. Mm -hmm. But yes, we do need the support of people, whether it be a large gift or, um, or small, you know, somebody that has four children and, uh, you know, really sees what's gonna happen, that there are gonna be programs for these kids to raise their education level. And, uh, you know, they may be only able to give $25. That $25 is equivalent to the $1 million that we would get from, uh, from somebody that, that could afford to do so. So, you know, all, all contributions, donations, um, uh, in kind, we're going to need chairs. That would be a wonderful sponsorship to have, uh, to be sponsoring the, the chairs or the rooms and, and everything. But we need to get through tier one first, which is we need to pay for this building. And, uh, and I feel so confident that this is going to happen by the end of June. Really? Uh, is there a place people can go to donate online, especially? Yes. Uh, we have a terrific website that explains everything about the building and uh, the, you know, uh, the fact that it's 40,000 square feet and, uh, and, and all of the, you know, all the interesting things, the possibilities for the future and what we would have in place right now. What's the website? It is smlcenter.org. That's easy. That is so easy, smlcenter.org. And yes, there, there is a safe, secure way for people to donate right on site. It's a, it's a PayPal, and, uh, so, and people are donating on site, which is wonderful. So. I wanted to bring up, this is your new guide, yeah. a visitor guide, and there's a great story in here, a great picture of, of somebody sitting right at the lake on a dock with a, an open uh, tablet or something, working from home, and that's part of the whole push. That's, What's the housing situation like? Is there enough housing, enough affordable housing? Or is that always, it's an issue everywhere. It's, it's an issue everywhere and, and specifically at the lake. Uh, you know, a few things happened uh, real estate wise, um, you know, with Smith Mountain Lake. One, we had a lot more people come to visit. Uh, two, we had a lot of homes, uh, mine included, that used to be on the rental market that we moved into full time. And 
you know, uh, so a lot of folks that could work remotely, um, you know, people right across the cove from me or from Alexandria, and they had owned that house for five, six years, and they both could work remotely, so they sold the house in Alexandria, moved down here, and doubled the square footage on their lake home, and now live here full time, and uh, put their kids into the um, Smith Mountain Lake Christian Academy, you know, just down the road. So, um, a lot of the inventory got eaten up uh, by by folks, you know, that came in from the outside, uh, and then with the extra tourism that came to town, um, a lot of that inventory, you know, so prices went up on on, on houses. Um, we could certainly use more developers, more builders to come out there. You know, if, if, if you ask any realtor, if, if there was more inventory, we could sell it tomorrow. You know, mm-hmm. um, it, it's still that hot out there. Uh, but what we would like to do is, you know, instead of talking people into buying houses as a investment you know, property like I did mine, you know, several years ago, um, we would rather they just come and live and bring their family with them. And that way we can stay open year round. The restaurants can be open year round, you know, turn it into a more 12 month economy as opposed to a six month economy. And and there's a lot of businesses out there that live and die every year from, you know, uh, the six months of summer and then, um, you know, just hold on through the winter so that they can reopen again. And we want to change that. Mm-hmm. And, and um, you know, we would much rather uh, attract a younger demographic, uh, a more family-oriented demographic that, uh, you know, has, has kids in the household. You know, instead of having to sell that house every five or ten years to a retiree who then ends up either passing away or uh, downsizing and moving away, you know, I, I'd rather sell it to... Uh, a brain surgeon from Carillion with four kids, and and he'll own it for 35 years. You right. Know. But is there is there enough housing for the working folk, even apartment complexes no. or whatever? Or are they coming in from? You know, yeah. Or that, they coming in from? That is definitely a challenge. I think uh, the the you know, the affordable housing for the folks that work at the restaurants that we want to stay open year round. Um, we're, we're, we've driven them, a lot of them, out of the market. So it's it's tougher, no Vicky, question. I'm sure you saw some of that also when you were, you, you heard these stories too about affordable housing even when you were director of the chamber. Of course, that is, everyone wants to come and stay and live at Smith Mountain Lake. It's truly just the perfect place to be, moderate climate, everything else. But, uh, you know, we we do encourage people to move in Uh, because they are going to help support our businesses. And uh, we have had numerous businesses that opened but didn't quite make it through that uh, that hard time, uh, you know, from November uh, through the winter. Mm -hmm. And so it is increasingly, uh, it, it, it truly is getting much better. And I think adding amenities like the center, like, oh my goodness, so uh, reopen that, uh, the brewery, um, I'm all for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it would be terrific. Mm-hmm. So uh, the growth, and as Andy said, you know, bringing in kids and uh, a- and everything is. I mean, it is. It will continue. It just continue to grow. No doubt, they'll stay, and uh, and then it, it goes farther. What we do have coming up, though, and I'm sorry, Andy. Mm-hmm. Um, what we do have coming up isn't is. An, is and I'm not sure whether it's apartments, condos, whatever, but affordable living that is being built right now, right behind the grand building that we hope to purchase. And so I think that that's the start of something that will continue. Mm. And uh, and again, you know, they're going to be supporting the businesses, and and uh, and our businesses will thrive if we stay on target. We stay on path. Uh, I feel all of these positive things of people coming in, whether they vacation, return vacation, uh, or they decide to move to Smith Mountain Lake. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we're, well, we're trying to change the, um, you know, the, the historical traffic pattern of get people to come visit once, get them to come visit twice, uh, maybe get them to buy, buy a, uh, you know, a vacation second home, and then eventually move here when they retire. We're trying to change that uh, dynamic to, you know, get them to come once, get them to buy a house and move here, you know, uh, to, to jump that conversation. So, you know, like in our, we have a visitor center that the, the chamber runs at Bridgewater Plaza, and, you know, 
tens of thousands of visitors a year come. And historically, we would, you know, they would come and we would talk to them about all the fun things there are to do at the lake and, you know, the 540 miles of shoreline and the pristine clear water. And you know, our marketing committee last month, we had a conversation where, you know, hey, they're already here. They already like the idea of the lake. Maybe we need to be talking to them, answering some of the questions they may have about living here full time. Right. So what is, you know, what are the schools like? What are the, uh, you know, what are the shopping? And am, am I really out here in the middle of nowhere? Right. You, you know, need to go to Roanoke or Lynchburg. Exactly. Right? You, know, you know, how close by are those things and what is there? And, um, you know, um, so we're kind of changing the conversation when folks come in because more and more, especially I've seen, um, you know, since I've been there in July, more and more of the folks that walk in the visitor center are already visitors. They're thinking about living here and they're trying to make that decision. And so um, so we want to make sure we have the uh, collateral information, you know, so we're developing uh, brochures, single sheet things that can answer some of those mm -hmm. questions for folks that might be considering living here full time. Yeah. Your headquarters is at Bridgewater Plaza? Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't want to dwell on this, but I want to talk about the book you're writing, Vicki. Mm -hmm. um, survival has consequences. Of course, you survived that horrific day seven years ago at Bridgewater Plaza. And uh, I guess you're, you're aiming for the fall, and I guess there will be some humor towards the end of that book. Talk about, talk, talk about the book you're writing. Is it oh, a bit cathartic? Yes, it, it, is, um, it begins, of course, with what happened that morning on August 26th. And, uh, um, and it really does explain exactly from my point of view exactly what happened that day and uh, you know I want people to to just feel it when they read it that they can just feel it but then you know and I was the only survivor and so at that point I was in critical condition um, I had a lot of things done a lot of uh, a lot of organs removed um, you know part of the colon removed uh, um, uh, a lot of surgery on my back um, from the bullet. The bullet was, as far as I know, is hollow tipped and it just went through like a pinball machine and just damaged everything along the way. Mm -hmm. And so thankfully I did survive. But then it kind of turns to, okay, so you've survived, but it's not like, you know, you get up out of the hospital bed and you're back you're back to normal. It, it is not like that. So different things that occurred, an ostomy. A lot of people have never experienced an ostomy, mm -hmm. and and while it really it's a was, bag on the, the extra. oh, it's it's a bag, and um, and it's an unpredictable bag, and some of I really honestly had very funny things, <laughs> you know, from that and and from other things. So the rest of the book honestly goes into um, so what happens when you're damaged, and how do you address it? And there's a lot of people that don't know how to address it. And they worry every day, and worry and woe, and uh, um, and it, you can turn it around. It no matter what your situation is. No matter what your situation is, and I just found myself that if if I stayed busy, active physically, which was really hard during those first few months, but uh, that uh, you know keeping a positive attitude, and so the it shows by some of the hilarious experiences that I had. I mean, they were tragic in a lot of ways and they were very painful, but the outcome was so funny in, in different things. Mm -hmm. If you have an ostomy bag and it, and it uh, builds up and it breaks a leak, um, there is nothing that compares to that odor. Mm -hmm. And when you're out in public and something like that happens and you feel it coming up through your shirt and you're sitting, oh. standing around talking to a lot of people, um, and you realize, and they're going, I smell something funny. Well, you know, that, that is part of it and how I resolved that situation. And I laughed all the way home, but it was, uh, you know, holding up the bathroom from other people right. and knock, knock, knock at the door. Better, anyway, laugh, better laughing than crying. It is true. And, uh, and so I, I hope to encourage people who have had whatever injury that they have had, whatever, maybe it's not a physical, maybe it's a mental thing, but to encourage um, a positive attitude and laugh a lot. Okay, that survival has consequences, the working title, yes. look for it in the fall? Uh, I am hoping to. Okay. Um, actually, the center has taken up my entire life which I love because it's right. my passion. And so I've sort of had to put that on, I'd say it's halfway done. 
Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, you got about a minute or so left, but just to wrap up, talk talk about the culture at the lake. How different it is, you know. You know, uh, it, it's better. There's an old saying: it's better at the lake, and it is. It is better at the lake. I've been in sales my entire life, and um, I'm selling something that I truly love. Uh, I have I have spent. I my wife and I's first home was on Lake Wasoda in Chippewa Falls, Wisconsin. I've lived in California. I've lived in Illinois. I've lived in Pennsylvania in some lovely places. This is the one I was looking for all along, and you know we're. This is where people. You, you can't go wrong at Smith Mountain Lake. Real quickly, Vicki, you had a, obviously a passion for many years as a chamber director. I loved it. I loved that job and uh, came back, um, even though I probably, you know, the, the doctor said, maybe not. And I right. said, oh, yeah, I have to be back there. I, uh, it, it, it really saved me a lot by working rather than laying in, on the couch wondering, you know, oh, each ache and pain. But... Um, I did love that. I, I'll, I'll mention, kind of tagging on to this, that my husband and I, um, we were in Houston during the 80s when the Houston crashed. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally crashed. Everybody lost their jobs, and, uh, and so we were one of the last, but he had lost his job. There was no jobs available. We can go any place in the world that we want to go. And you went here. And we came to, well, we looked at a few other lakes, and... Uh, uh, he did, and would report back to me. But we found Smith Mountain Lake. That was it. He just and I fell in love with it. But there wasn't a whole lot here mm -hmm. 38 years ago. Mm -hmm. I know that we struggled and struggled with our neighbor to purchase a lot um, right next door, a full acre, maybe an acre and a quarter on the water. And we said, oh, my goodness, it is, uh, it is $11,000. They're just wow. gouging. <laughs> that was then. This is now. We're going to have to leave it there. I, I really enjoyed uh, this. Uh, Andy Bruns, Executive Director for the Smith Mountain Lake Chamber, and Vicki Gardner, the President of the Smith Mountain Lake Center. Thank you both for joining us today. And you get out to the lake more often. I will. I have to. Yeah. I'm Gene Morano. This is Business Matters. Have a good day.